I'm Benjamin Hartmann. I'm normally head of uh, marketing and sales at Leindecker. And I was developing um, this show format together with a client, Twisted Talent, with Jörg and Vicky. Because of the fact of Corona, um, we had to think about what we're going to do, how we're going to do live streams, which we can implement and what we have to do to bring the artists in a regular mood that they perform well and what we have to think about um, how we transport their emotions and their spirit in the songs and other kind of stuff uh, to the audience which is outside not inside the venue because we are not allowed to have audience in arenas. That's why we decided not using digital lights and sound um, or something um, or setup. Uh, we decided to do a full production. We brought lights, staging, backdrop, projection, cameras in the ISS dome and decided to use it as they are normally used in the past, which is a um, um, projection here for the comment page. All the visitors are allowed to uh, write comments and share um, pictures um, from their home on the social wall here that the, the artist can react to it. So we want to make sure that the audience at home is going to be a part of the show. So um, the artists today, it's VNV Nation. We had Ariana um, Saeed from Af Afghanistan we had Gamma Ray from Hamburg, we've had Lacrimosa, so everybody was um, interacting with the audience. So they were commenting, they were posting stuff, they were sending pictures and then they started to interact. We made the experience that all clients, all comments um, from, from the visitors at home, they were sacrificed. So they were happy and they were, um, it was a challenge, but the results and the ticket selling made us clear that we are on the right way. The major spot is we were concentrated on having a high quality stream uh, with broadcast cameras. Um, we were thinking about having a studio situation in an arena with uh, real lights and making sure that um, the result, the sound, the light, the video broadcasting is on high quality standards. So we are um, transferring everything in HD. We have a pre-show. They are offered in the ticket selling after the show. We have a Zoom call where the bands and some certain um, privileged people outside could join in and could ask personal questions. So this is part of the concept that we are trying to bring the both parties together on one stage. When the lockdown starts, we were out of business for at least two months. So all employees were at home, the whole warehouse was shut down, all jobs got cancelled, so we were down, down to zero. Then after two months, we decided to start working on different concepts. So the regular business at Leindecker is automotive big booths around the world for automotive clients. And we kind of started developing how we're going to stream, how we're going to do pre-shows, how we're going to manage um, a lot of broadcasting stuff but not only for conferencing, um, more focused on life. It's part of the business from the past few years that we are gaining more and more life situations. So this is kind of result of everything that we dial in uh, to this um, spot that um, we will have bands on stage and we present them pretty well, that everybody joins in and have fun with it. Normally we are working with planning agencies um, together, um, but we didn't have the time um, and even though the budget, uh, we decided to bring it by our own. So I was um, designing the stage concept here uh, on Visivik and then uh, we decided to develop it more and more, to increase it more and more um, efficient for video, for broadcasting. So the whole company, our production manager Uli, he was in charge to make it technically possible. I was taking care uh, with the communications to the broadcaster, um, for the even though for the client, for the bands, I was in charge to present it well, that each artist was deciding, okay, on this stage setting, we can join in, we can do our show there. We were not concentrated on the budget. It, it was more thoughts about how we make it possible. Um, the time frame was pretty fixed. We had two days of um, setting everything up with Willy and, the, and his guys from the warehouse and from the whole company. So we have normally a lot of employees from the company here. So um, regarding the budget, uh, this is what we have really have to be patient for it because um, our CEOs, they were a part in this concept. They are believing in this concept because the whole production is finally paid by the tickets we are selling. And it was a hard challenge to keep the budgets as small as possible, that the costs are even covered when we get out of this venue. So this is part of um, PMR work to develop um, a staging and a setup for this worldwide um, team here. Um, and finally, 
I think the decision is already made that we will continue. So this is um, very important to, to all of us, to all partners and to all thoughts that it's not only a one one-off show, it's, it's something which just have started to, to grow. As we choose Martin as a lighting operator, um, he was in charge to get all the whole communication to the lighting guys. So he was pre-programming everything a lot. He was helping them to get their ideas into our setup that finally everything works. My name is Martin Heining. I'm doing light support and uh, light design and also operating on this event. For some bands, I do the whole shows. Today, VNV Nation is playing and I'm their LD since years. The days before, I did some key lights for the camera system. Front of house lighting, that's my profession. I'm happy to have a few shows because VNV Nation is all there playing all these car cinema things and we also had concerts with uh, social distancing. So it's not new to me, but that's uh, something really special and I'm really uh, thankful to be here because uh, that's what we want to do, and we're not allowed to at the moment. The lighting system is a mixture between a standard rock and roll set, so with uh, spots slash beams, so we use the Klepaki Mythos. Then uh, we got wash lights inside. This is uh, Martin Viper Wash DX. Some SGM Q7s and P6. For key light, we use Mac Viper Performance. It's a standard rock and roll rig but it's uh, optimized for broadcast situations. So we get these uh, side trusses to give every camera a good view of the stage. So that's a, that's a bit different to a normal show, but uh, in the end, <laughs> what should I say? All the camera guys doing a really cool job. So light-wise, we don't have to worry about anything. That's not a television show. It should look uh, as a rock and roll show. So it does. So if I just want to do beams, that's okay for them. Yeah, I'm working with the Hawk since uh, the early days. When moving lights came up, I started with the Hawk 2. And I really like the workflow of the Hawk. Uh, that's the reason why I also used the Hawk here, because I'm familiar with this system. It's stable because we've got no backup console in here. We in Nation is a, is a very beamy dance show. It has theatrical elements inside, so every song builds up, comes down, um, and it's very focused to the singer. So our writer says, uh, bring as much beams as you have. So I'm very happy to have these uh, clay parking mythos because so that's a shitload of beams in here. So it's really good for our show. And if someone else needs a spot, you can use them as a hybrid uh, fixture. And that's really cool for everyone. At VNV Nation, we always have a colored mood. So we are building up with, uh, with the beams and the, the wash lights. It's always a bit on top. This is a very beamy show with a huge amount of silhouettes, um, mostly done by the uh, GLP uh, X4 bars, which I like because this is a light curtain and also cool for every camera because you always have a color in the air. I hope it will be as cool as with audience. <laughs> I can imagine that's not easy for a singer to do the show without, in the end, I'm the only person he sees. <laughs> And I'm not the best dancer, to be honest. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ronan from VNV Nation. We've just finished up a live stream, well, worldwide live stream concert tonight here in the ISS Dome in Dusseldorf. What a crazy experience because during a time of Corona and everything that's affecting the world, uh, people being locked down and what have you and tours being impossible, but you know, some kinds of concerts being available, the fact that we could do this was absolutely incredible. Uh, this was a, a moment that really united us with our fans. So what we did tonight was we imagined all the people we know from the shows and all the people we know listening around the world were all standing there in front of us. We could easily imagine it and that gave us the inspiration to go on and we had an intense time. We've been doing shows uh, through Corona uh, under like very strict regulations. So we found states where people have found ways to make shows work. And uh, they've come up with some very innovative ideas. And I mean, innovation is really the key to humans. We are an innovative species. We will find ways. But if we all sit down on our asses and complain about it, we're not gonna achieve shit. So, Either we try to find a way to get through this, or we try to find a way to beat this, or work within the parameters and do something worthwhile, that's great. Otherwise, we just end up with a bunch of sad, boring, knuckle-dragging gits on the street going, mm, but what about my freedom? And I'm not like that. I'm gonna see something positive in this, we're gonna get through, we're gonna take care of the people we love, we're gonna make sure that all the people we love are safe, 
And to be honest, working with my crew is brilliant because they're my family. And one of the reasons why I've been doing these shows for the last while is that all of the profit from the shows goes into a fund, which is gonna basically make sure that all these guys who are not being supported by the government, for a number of reasons, and I'm not going to go through a political discussion on this, but I really think that a lot of people in this country who've basically provided the entertainment and the culture to everybody at home and made their lives much, much, much better are being dropped and left at the wayside and being told to go on and find another job or basically being forced with no other opportunity. I want to make sure that all of my people are taken care of and that they're going to be there for me next year because they have been there for me. We either look after each other or we fall the hell apart. That's it. While it comes to Corona, we decided to think about um, how we're going to manage the crew here inside and how we're going to manage the whole venue and even the artist um, production, the artist itself, um, the crew, that everybody is safe. So this is the Riedel Disc Tech system. Um, this is um, for everybody who's shown up here in this venue. Um, they have to wear it. Right now it's rumbling and indicating that we have some problems. We can guarantee here and that nobody's getting too close. Around one and a half meters, it's alarming by beeping or indicating by light. So while the setup time, we've had uh, those things running and right now, everybody who gets into the venue is getting um, the disc tag for setting up and dismantling. I think it's a good tool. Even though getting everybody sensitive for um, hygienic things and um, um, taking care that everybody's staying safe, We are using here a PM10 system from Yamaha. They supported us pretty big because we were trying out right now the new reverse system on 96 kilohertz. Uh, the artists were ordering CL5s as regular desks, but we choose to work on the reverse system. My name is Oliver Fogus. Uh, I'm a freelancing sound engineer for, for a very long time, more than 25 years. Um, since several years, um, I do a lot of work with Yamaha as a freelance engineer, so um, as time goes by, they asked me um, to join the team as a product specialist, which I do still on a freelance basis. Uh, and I have a lot of fun uh, getting uh, desks like the CL in the market um, and uh, being there when the PM10 was released. And when they released uh, PM5 and PM3, like in the middle of Corona times, um, I was also there. And this is probably one of the reasons I'm here today, um, to give a little bit of uh, support for the uh, engineers who are mixing the bands finally in here. What we do right now here is uh, we have them at front of house and monitor positions, either PM consoles and CL consoles, which we use as a backup system. Um, so that means basically that we have a passive split we split everything into RIOs for the CLs and the RPOs for the PMs. Uh, we have a PM10 at the monitor position and a PM5 uh, in here, which is used to be the former front of house. <laughs> right now, it's more like uh, the broadcast um, audio uh, place. What we do right here is we mix the band um, like as if it would be a standard festival situation. So we have a band, standard rider festival, a band patch. Uh, we use their inputs, split them up passively, PM10 for Mons, which uh, delivers or mixes uh, on wedges, side fills or in-ears, uh, or a combination of all. Uh, and we have uh, the PM5, which finally ends up mixing a stream on the complete, basically, gain that we can have, so uh, that after this, we end up mixing left and right for the stream. We send it over to our mastering and continuity engineer, He's uh, taking care for CL1 and uh, what he mainly does is, as I said, he's mixing all the continuity, so the hosts plus the uh, pre-recorded uh, material plus the band. And he takes care that everything ends up being in the standard broadcast format, which we use at the moment uh, is the more or less Spotify standard, which uh, we're talking about minus 14 LUFS. We have definitely uh, the idea of using uh, the standard dynamic range, a little bit less than you would do on a festival. But so we are talking about an average from 8 to 10 dB of dynamic range for the whole music show. This is what we have uh, throughout the last uh, days. And um, we're using minus 14 uh, dB uh, LAUFS uh, with a peak of minus 1. So a pretty standard setup. There's nearly no one uh, from the engineers, and I think this is the majority of uh, freelancing engineers, nearly everybody had contact with the CL or QL desk. So mainly everybody knows the idea um, 
about the central logic setup for your mod desks. So the good thing about PM is that it starts right there. Uh, so uh, the point is where you start over and get your own way of workflow from a CLQL towards a PM is actually very easy as soon as you have a standard setup. So what we do, I get a CL file if the engineer has one, then I transfer it to a PM, then we put it inside here, we just load one scene and uh, we'll, we'll edit it in a way so that it fits uh, the basic setup in here. So we're recording, for example, um, directly uh, with 40 direct outs so that we have a, a standard track by track plus several stem recording every day uh, as a backup system for us. Um, and all the output patches that goes into our Dante system needs to be the same anyhow, but this is no problem because after the trans, uh, transferation, we just insert it here and then we have to uh, make, it, make it as smooth as possible for the engineer to feel that he is still in his scene, but he can use this, uh, the opportunity to use more than one screen, which he actually has on a CL. So uh, workflow wise, this is something that really gives you the opportunity to be much quicker but it takes a little while to adopt. And this is exactly why I'm here for. I started my first show on a PM5, I think like four weeks ago. So I had the same situation just right now and I had like um, two hours before my first show to, to join in and jump on it. And still right now you learn something more every day, a little bit of shortcuts and stuff, but it's, it's a very quick system as I said, because everybody nearly knows a CL. So signal-wise, just the, the sheer amount of inputs and outputs you can handle is, is something very special. We're talking about a system that has two DSPs right now. So one gives you 120 inputs and 72 buses, plus the, the bigger DSP uh, gives you 288 uh, inputs <laughs> into 107 buses. That is a quite huge uh, possibility you have. So you don't have to think anymore about, oh, I'm using uh, some more buses for the output. There's no question that you can do pretty much every production at the moment I can think of. On the other hand, the biggest advantage right now is uh, that we have new headams. Um, so we're not talking uh, about rios anymore. We can, of course, use standard rios uh, that everybody has, but there's a new IO box developed 4 p.m. specifically, uh, which is called RPO. Uh, and in there, um, by a combination and a, a huge effort of, of a lot of work, uh, we introduced uh, um, Rupert Neve Silk, like that's the old uh, portico headamp, which is completely built inside there. So this happens actually in the I.O. box, not in the desk or the DSP, but in the I.O. box. So um, you just can work with that Silk option uh, if you're using the RPOs, but then it's in every input. Uh, and it, it does exactly the same than the analog model of the Rupert Neve Portico. So it gives you the option uh, to use silk uh, in two regions, in two frequency regions, either in bass or mid, and they're called blue and red. And you can uh, put them in and dial them in as much as you like. So this is one of the drastic, most drastic uh, differences between working with CLQL or PM. You have a lot of tools that gives you the opportunity to color your sound for more of the original idea of a CL, uh, it always has been keep it as pure uh, as it used to be. So right now you can do the same thing in here, keeping all the uh, signal flow pure. But on the other hand, you can start musically, uh, EQ things, uh, work on plugins, uh, and really give a huge coloration for sound. So uh, this is something different in PM than in CL because you have much more opportunities. Right here, uh, we have the uh, Eventide SP2016 reverb. Um, basically, for a start, we can choose on here from the internal library, uh, spaces, instruments, artists, or factory refolds. So on top of the standard uh, default factories we know, there's a lot of uh, artists stuff built in, like from Dave Pensado, Bacho Bros, uh, George Massenburg. So a lot of uh, algorithms you can start and uh, dial them in as a um, basic starting, gives you an idea of uh, the ability of that unit, which is really, really huge. Uh, and from there on, you can edit it um, in the way you, you prefer your own. One of the major features I think is very, very handy for, um, for mixing is there is a position parameter right here. 
And what you do is, uh, doesn't matter which algorithm uh, you dial in, you have this parameter always, you can position your original signal within the algorithm of the effect. And you can position it from front to rear, which is a very, very good help to stack instruments in the deep of the room. Back in the days, you always had to do a lot of edits on specific algorithms to specifically get this opportunity to position instruments very clearly in a mix. Right here, it's very easy. So the other Eventide plugin, uh, all PMs have basically is an original algorithm uh, of the Eventide uh, H3000 that everybody knows who's working in studios or live. Uh, and we have this unit inside here um, so, if you go on select, you can load all your famous algorithms like the dual H910 micro, uh, the layered shift, the voice doubler, the monochorus, the real chorus 2. So all the algorithms uh, pretty much are there that you know from the hardware. Uh, and depending on your, the size of your DSP, you can just load it as many times as you want, which is a big help. You see, when you transfer files from CL or QL, it's uh, of course uh, a must that all plugins uh, that uh, are basically um, in a CL or QL needs to be uh, in a PM as well. So this is the case. For example, this is the Dynamic EQ. Um, there's the standard um, two-way Dynamic EQ built inside here. Uh, the PM also has a four-way Dynamic EQ. So um, there is, of course, in a PM everything from a CL or QL, but it's even much more. So we're talking, I think, in a total amount of 56 plugins in this unit. All the plugins are there if you install the right firmware. So no uh, dongles, no licenses. Everything is just in there. So the setup, um, we choose here um, broadcast cameras from Panasonic. It's the AC3500Es. Um, with different lenses, so we have a dolly cam in the front, we have a crane, we have a total cam uh, with a pretty super close um, lens. Then we have left and right on um, pumps, some um, tele cams. And on stage we have a um, few, I think four, uh, small um, Marshall cams. They are um, for pretty close um, view angles on stage, um, which we can easily set up. In the back we choose a projection screen because um, of the look and even the resolution. Um, we could have installed an LED screen, but this was um, something about too heavy. Um, but also we don't want to have the blur effect of the LEDs. So because of um, all the cameras and all those shutters, we decided to have a projection that we don't have any issues with the frame rate or something like this. So um, the projection, the back projection on a black screen, the black pearl, um, makes us um, pretty pretty close that um, the projection is not over blowing everything, it's part of the show. In the future, hopefully we will have audience, but I think we have to think about to have way more video and we have to think about to implement broadcasting as a standard because um, I think to have that many people buying tickets on seeing the shows, I think this is something what we have to, do, to think about. I think this will be gaining more and more. So I think we will have those hybrid events or hybrid live shows. But I think that the video content and the video, um, you know, those concepts of the shows, I think that they will gain up definitely because um, this is a kind of learn process right now. But until we are not allowed to have more than 5,000 people, those productions in arenas doesn't make sense. So we have to think about how we get people as super VIPs maybe in the venues soon. And then the rest could outside see it on the live stream. Yeah, we have to think about that.